So to turn your Vita on to start doing radiography, simply turn the computer on, turn on your monitor, and then power up the Vita itself. Once you've got your password box up, enter in the password that we've given you for your computer. Then the computer will finish booting up. Then the software will actually self-start. So once that's opened up, you're able to pop in your username and password. And then it will default to the username you used last. And all you need to do is enter the password that we've given you and hit enter. And then the software will load up and you'll be ready to start doing your radiography. So once you've logged on to the system, this is the first page you'll come to, which is the work list. And from here, you can search for patients or input new patient details so you're ready to start radiography. So once you're ready to enter the patient details, click in the bottom left corner of the screen onto New Patient, and your patient entry screen will load up. From here, it will automatically select today's date. You can input a client ID number. This is normally a practice management number. If you don't have a number, the system will auto-generate you a number. And then input the client's last name, so owner's surname. If it's an owner that's already on the system, it will give you the option of shortcutting and going straight to there. Input the patient's name. And then you need to select your species. It is very important to choose a species because this will alter the projections that are available. For example, under equine, you get all the hot projections at DLPMO. Whereas if you go into canine, you'll get different projections for the dog. So we're going to select abdomen and lateral abdomen and a DV as well. Once you've got all the projections there that you want, just simply click on to start and you're ready to process films. So once you're ready to process your films, you do have the option of using the help guide. You click down in the bottom corner here the machine will show you the correct positioning and collimation for the projection and also an example radiograph. So for most shots, this is in there for most species. So a useful help, especially for student nurses. So once you're ready to process the plate, make sure you've selected the correct body part on the screen and then you want to line up the red arrow to the red arrow, grey side up, insert the cassette until it stops and then just give it a gentle push and at which point the machine will start unloading the screen for you. So once you've processed your image, it will come up on the screen. You could at this point rotate the picture, window it, add markers, etc. So I'm going to start off by rotating the image and you've got the options here to rotate and flip and I need to rotate clockwise. So the animal is now walking off the left hand side of the screen. I've also managed to crop off my marker, so if I choose markers click over the image and then choose the marker that I need and I can position that wherever I want it to be. Also I can play with the brightness and contrast so that if you just need to tweak that you've got the option of doing that. There are also the options to magnify the image and to play with your black surround mask. So this is effectively altering your collimation after the event. You can turn that on and off and then manipulate that so you can come in a little bit closer, produce a much tidier image if you need to, and then we'll reprocess that. One of the new features on this software is the advanced manipulation tools, and these can be found by clicking up here. This takes you through to options of doing all your measurements, but also you've got your vertebral heart school tool, your laminitis measurement tool, TTA measurement tool and TPLO measurement tool and all of these talk you through how to use them with simple instructions on the screen. Additionally you can draw lines and shapes around different anatomies as well as all your measurement tools. So once you've got the image that you're really happy with and that you want to keep all you need to do is in the bottom right hand corner is accept the image and that's the image then stored permanently. If you don't accept an image and you have a power cut, it's all right, the image will still be there when you rebuild the computer. This is just you accepting it, and if you've got packs, at that point it will be sent to packs. No matter how hard we try, we do get some images that we're not happy with, and you want to reject these because you don't really want to be keeping them for future reference. Really simple to do. 
In the bottom right hand corner you have the reject button with the red cross. If you click onto that, the system then asks you why you're rejecting the image. This is really useful as a QA tool because you can find out why you are repeating x-rays and you can use this as a way of improving radiographic technique. So for this one we're just going to say it was a positioning error and then tick. At which point the picture will develop a red cross. The good thing is if you've accidentally rejected an image by mistake you can go over to the image and right click and you get the option to unreject it. So if you have rejected it by mistake you don't lose the image. If you want to review images that you've taken on a patient earlier in the day, all you need to do is work from your work list, locate the patient that you want and just double click on their name, at which point the images will just load back into the viewer and at this point it is possible to manipulate them again if you need to. So once you've got the picture you're happy with, often we need to share them by exporting them onto a CD if it's a hip score or elbow score or popping them onto memory stick if you want to transfer them to another computer. So once you've accepted your image just click down in the bottom corner here for export and you get the export menu come up. From here you can choose the place you wish to export to. The CD option will only be live if there's a CD or DVD in the machine so make sure you have inserted a disc first and all you need to do is choose CD if you want to add the Daikon viewer you can do and also if you want to change your format to something like JPEG you can do. Daikon is what you will need for a hip score or an elbow score. You can then choose which pictures you want if you've got multiple images and you can just choose select all if there's lots of pictures there and then once you're happy just click onto the export button. Alternatively if you need them as JPEGs to email off to another vet or for patient records you want, may want to pop them onto a USB stick. Make sure you've chosen your USB stick, depending on which drive socket you've inserted it into. And again, you can choose your format. DICOM being the biggest format size is really useful, but if you are emailing, JPEG does work better. So you can choose that. And you can actually choose the quality level of your JPEG. So if you're just using it for Facebook, for example, you may want a small image, or you might, may want a higher quality image. And once you've done that, just click onto export and it'll export it off for you. If you have your beta connected to a PAC system, you probably want to end patients once you finish with them. And that's very simple to do. You just click on the end study button. And this then makes sure that all of that patient's images are sent off to the PAC system. So once you've finished with the Vita, very quick and simple to turn off, go to the top right hand corner to the drop down system menu, exit to desktop, and then same as a normal computer, click on the start menu and shut down, and then simply turn the Vita off by the rocker switch on the back. So we've gone over most of the basic functions that the Image Suite software has. If you need more help, please feel free to either contact us at the office or contact your local account manager and all the details for that is on our website.